video is a compilation of three nights on the beach on the quest to find out exactly what keeps writing the writing. Double head of writing here, or a double head is the right name for it, because one of them is just the head. It's completely noshed, isn't it? Um, yeah. Bit that's not my live bait rig. Well and truly noshed. That, to me, looks like conger eel, doesn't it? Possibly crabs. Well, I've just brought my live bait rig in, and uh, look at that. That has been well and truly noshed, isn't it? Well and truly noshed, look, and it, because it's the master hook. But, uh, yeah, look at that. I think something quite big with teeth has done that. Good evening and welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ. We are down on the beach again. We're in the same location, uh, the end of St John's Road on the seafront. Um, the target tonight is whatever it is that's been eating the whiting. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, uh, but I'm not going to declare my target species until I've caught one. But that's the target tonight. We're going to be fishing with two rods. Uh, one rod's going to have a live bait rig on it still, which is going to be trying to catch a little white in um, and then attach it so that it's, uh, keep it out there with a bigger hook next to the white in. So if someone comes along and eats that, hopefully they're going to get picked up on the bigger hook. And my other rod is going to have a um, two hook flapper rig, or no, not flapper, two, two down rig. Um, Paternoster rig, I don't know what it's called to be honest. Uh, it's going to have slightly larger baits than I usually do with what I call slugs as bait. Now, they're not garden slugs, they're slugs that I've made um, using black lug and a strip of cuttlefish. Um, and that's going to get whacked out as well and see if we can't pick something up other than just the whiting. I got down here, the tide, it's the bottom, just, just past the bottom of the tide now. Uh, but we, we're down here in daylight, which is unusual for me this time of year, so we're going to get a little bit of daylight. So we'll use the daylight to set ourselves set up and then hopefully we'll get fishing. So let's get on and do that. We're going to set the rods up just there. I just gotten used to this Cause love from my list of to do I'm tackling this up tonight. Um, it's like the alternative. Uh, we're using a two hook paternoster, clip down paternoster. Um, we're using my, what I like to call homemade slugs <laughs> because they look a bit like slugs, but uh, that's the nearest they thing they come to the garden is looking a bit like slugs. And they're on two hook panels just to hold them straight. So what we've got is we've got some black lug and a strip of cuttlefish whipped together with some bait elastic which I did last night um, and I've done up a, I don't know, a couple of dozen of those for the night um, and then all we're going to do is we got a size 4.0 um, Aberdeen on the end there um, I've gone for a slightly bigger hook because I'm not that bothered if I don't catch little whiting on it to be truthful so, you know, if, if, if it's a bit too big to get in the mouth of a white, actually that's quite good news. And then, so we hook it, hook it through one end, and then we're going to whip this in place with bait elastic. So, let's see how we do that. What I like to do with my bait elastic is pull out about five or six inches, hold the bait elastic spool in my left hand, and then whip that first half on so going up towards the hook until we get to the end of it make sure it's cinched down fairly tight and then with the spool that we've got in a hand we rip the rest on bit awkward when you haven't got something holding 
the bait. So you've got to kind of hold it by its end. Keep it, hope that it's fairly rigid. Whip that on and then go back down the bait again, just to double whip the important bit that's on the hook. And then go back to the middle. Now, some of you might say that's too much bait elastic. Well, to be quite honest, it's better to have too much than too little on my belief. At least you know your bait is gonna be nice and rigid in there. Get rid of that loose end. There's a loose end of bait elastic, get rid of that. And then slide down the panel hook, which is a, literally is a small circle hook. And its only job really is just to hold this bait straight on the line. And the panel hook is held in place with a little bit of luminous tube just so it gives us a little bit, of, a bit more attraction on that bait. And then we repeat that on the second hook. And then I'm using these Trident um, rotor clips. I, I, didn't, I wasn't a great believer in them um, when I first got them, but then I was using hooks, I think, that were too thick for them. But if you're using a fine wire Aberdeen like this, they, they work very well. They hold that nicely in place until it splashes down. And then what happens is, it flies into the water, as it hits the water, that flicks that up and it releases the hook. And they work well with this size of hook because you can get both sides of the whoo. And my first bait out is rattling like a good one. I'm hoping that I've not hooked my first white in the night, but I'm guessing that's what's happened. Let's finish tackling these up. Beauty of these um, splash down leads is if they're a little bit loose, you can just tighten them up by squeezing the wires together and it makes for make sure you've got a nice, good grip on the bottom. So let's do the second one. Well, both rods are going away like the clappers at the moment. We've got a feeling that the live bait rod might have picked up a bit of weed and that's why that is, it's the waves that are doing it. Um, which means I better bring it in, I suppose. And then we'll check the other rod. Okay, well, I just wound in the live bait rod and uh, this is not a good sign for the night. Uh, hopefully it's not, we're gonna get doomed with a lot of weed. So, bring that off. If needs be, bait the hook back up and get it back out of there. On the live bait rod, again, we're fishing with a live bait rig. Slightly different a variation on, on the ones I was doing the other day. Um, this is this is a pulley seesaw, so the main line comes down and it's going into a pulley bead, which I think you can probably see up there, and then the hook, the main body of the hook snoo goes through that pulley bead, so it will feed up and down. So when it's when it's ready, when it's baited and ready to cast, this will clip into the splashdown like that. So that'll be baited there. There'll be a little bit of bait on on, on this hook here. Okay. Um, the reason for the pulley bead is it, it allows for a bit of adjustment on um, ensuring that, that this is nice and tight. As soon as this splashes down in the water, that little plate will fly up and release the hook. The weight will pull down a couple of inches and then we have the hook snood in the tide. Now it'll be, it'll be a little bit off the bottom, but, but it's a long snood and I've put a short length of wire trace on the bottom of this. It's a bite trace, because that's where I was getting bitten off the other night. So um, the idea is that oh, the whiting comes along and eats this and hangs on the hook. This, is, this hook is sitting next to the whiting's head. Big fish comes along, engulfs and eats the whiting, picks up this circle hook, which uh, hooks itself. If, it, if it's got teeth and what have you, and it's biting into this area here, it's biting into wire, it's not biting into monofill. Okay. So that's the plan. And obviously that gives the bait a little bit of weight, so it helps keep it anchored on the bottom. So let's see how that goes. Right, well, we've got a fish on the live bait rig. Now it's tugging well. Let's hope that it's a channel. Let's hope that's a nice little pin white in on the end there, and that's rattling away on there. We'll find out a bit later. The live bait rod 
is nodding away nicely. So we had a we had a big cracking um, initial whiting bite on it, and every so often there's a little tug. So I'm happy. I'm pretty convinced that we've got a small whiting on the end of there. Uh, so let's leave it out there and uh, see what happens. If if it goes crazy, I've actually slackened the drag off. So if I get a big fish there, it's not going to pull my rod into the water. And the other rod which is out has got um, a two snood, pennel hooked, Paternoster rig, uh, and it's baited with some black lug and a little bit of cuttlefish, just to give it a little bit more substantiveness. Um, so that if the if the white and I are rattling away at the baits, um, there's still a bit of bait left behind. Now this rod was nodding away um, and we're still doing stuff now so might be a mistake to wind it in but it's been out there a while if there's no live bait on there I need to freshen the bait up well you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't and I brought in my live bait rig just to see because it hasn't been nodding for a while and look what's on the end of it a perfect little pin whiting if you want to see a, a whiting hooked in the nose like that with that circle hook sitting in front of it ready to receive something a little bit more aggressive so we'll get this one back he's done his bit for the day and we'll get another bait out and uh, see what we can do right let's wind in the left hand rod which hasn't been doing a great deal for a while see if we've got no bait or We've got a dead man fighting on there. Proof for the pudding. Nicely hooks um, white in there with a nicely presented hook. Uh, should a predatory fish come, come along and eat it? Nice size white in for a for a live bait, nice size. So let's get this bait baited up and get it back out there. Twice now I've wound in um, the live bait rigs thinking there was nothing on there and twice I've had a really nice little live bait on them. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. I have to say that this lift down rod was knocking a little bit earlier on but it's absolutely stationary now. So I'm gonna wind it in and just check the bait on it. I'm going to leave the right hand one out. Come what may. So let's wind this and see what happens. Right, so it was the right choice. It was the right choice to bring it in because the uh, live bait rig, there was no bait on it now. So I was looking at an empty hook. So, yeah, it was the right choice to do. Right, let's get that back out there. Right, well, we've got the kettle on. Um, we have a brew in a minute. And I've got... The making of popcorn. I'm going to go doing popcorn on the dish. The pan, we've got the corn, corn with some butter and some salt. Kettle's boiling, we're nearly. Okay, so let's get the kettle boiling. Whoops, there we go. That's the tea made. So, that's the brew. Cheers. Corn is a popping. Oh, it smells good. Wow, 
I've got popcorn. Woohoo! Hmm, that's alright. Popcorn on the beach. So here's a bit of kit that I would commend to anybody that's thinking about fishing at night in the winter on the beach. These are our USB rechargeable hand warmers. And you just whack them on your USB charger and charge them up. And then when you're down the beach and it's cold, you whack it on. Oh, and it's toasty hot. It's lovely. It's lovely. My hands were getting quite cold. They're not now. They're really hot. So, not particularly expensive. Um, as I say, they also are a USB charger. So, if you're not using them as a hand warmer, you can use them to charge your phone or whatever. So, they, they charge up on a, on a USB, um, mini USB or micro USB and then you can plug a USB in and then charge your phone off it. So one or the other. I've never tried charging my phone off it, I don't know how many charges you get off it. Um, but yeah, great, great bit of kit. So I commend them. You can see the red lights are on, all three of them, which means it's on maximum power, red hot toasty. And my hands are oh, nice and warm. Picked up the first dogfish of the night. Only a little one. Get him back in. Pronto. Hope he's not too deeply hooked. So there he is. First doggy of the night. Just like the hooks. Isn't it there? Isn't it quite solid there? Oh, I mean, shaking its head. It's not a dogfish. If I was going to put money on this, I'd say it was an eel. But... We'll see in a minute. Wait. Woo woo woo! Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's quite a solid tub there. Surf it in on a wave. Whiting on there. And we've got our first little conger eel. Yee it's what's been biting the whiting. Yeah, that's a a reasonable little conger eel. It wasn't coming off, was it? It's twisted itself around the line well and truly. You're not helping yourself, mate, by twisting round around in circles, that's for sure. There's a double header, little whiting, and little congrel, and a steamed up lens.
definitely into something here. Dogfish, maybe. Mm. Just it wakes up and gives an almighty pull. Remember eel, maybe? Dogfish! <laughs> Here we go. Got any better dogfish? Get that out and get it back in the water quick. A nice size dogfish rock, I think, is that? Certainly thought well. Get back in the water. Woo! <laughs> that feels like a bit of fish and he pulled my rod rest over. Fighting well. Set. Take the line with me, big time. That is a better fish, isn't it? That is definitely a better fish. You know, Phil? That is a, a much better fish. Much better fish. Please, with that off the beach. <laughs> slip the eel, slip the eel. Here's the towel. It's a much better fish. Please with that, off the beach. Well, just to go to show that the whiting pandemic hasn't ended. Um, one little whiting coming, rattling away like a wooden. So, uh, comes a bait and a hook meant for a better fish, mate. Hopefully, this is what I've got on my life bait rig. Well, just when you thought it was over, another huge lunging bite, it's pulled my rod wrist over. Up. 
Cracking bite, a rod brush went over, um, and look what I managed to get. Beautiful little thorny. Beauty. Beautiful fish, and completely unexpected. Completely unexpected fish. Right result. Right result. Look at that. Right result. Right result. So fantastic. Beauty. Yeah. Yeah, well done, mate. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Well, just to go goes to show that it isn't over till the very large lady starts her ar ar aria. I mean, fat, the fat lady sings because I was literally thinking about packing up when I get a huge lunging bite which literally pulled my rod rest over and thorn back completely unexpected not the target species but welcome nonetheless so we're going to carry on fishing for a bit longer um, till the tide is definitely on the turn oh we've got a rattling bite on that left hand rod again Keep an eye on that. Just getting my chest rig set up and ready to film it. Because as, as sod's law, the battery ran flat as I was running down the beach. Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, let's get set up and get ready for the next episode. Well, we fished the whole flood. Uh, and as you can see from that, the tide is now on the way out. So I think it's time to pack up and um, head for home because one thing's for sure, I am starving hungry. Um, but yeah, it's a successful night and some su surprises, you know. Um, certainly the ray was a surprise. Just goes to show that Seaford Beach on the right night fishes really well. Right, fantastic night on the beach, that's all I can say. Um, we weren't getting played by whiting. We've had a couple of decent fish, I would suggest. The uh, two, two congers and a, an array, some nice doggies. Um, yeah, successful night, successful night. Very pleased with that. Tide's on the way out now, um, so I'm gonna pack up. So I'm gonna walk down the beach, say hi to the guys down here, help me and say thank you to them. Um, yeah, cracking night. Cracking night. <laughs> right, well, I just want to say thanks to Stuart and Kai for their help. Um, no worries. landing that ray and getting some shots of it. Um, are you staying down here much longer, are you? Or? Off, off 10, I'll be going. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I don't think it fishes very well on the, on the air bit. It fishes better on the flood, but. Um, I thought we've had good success at low tide here. Uh, uh, low tide, but it's, yeah. it's when the tide's oh, yeah, going yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we just yeah. out as long as we can. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh well, anyway, how, 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 how have you done tonight? You just. Uh, I've had about four dogfish. Oh, right. um, five or six whiting and a little strap. Oh, right, okay, yeah. cool. So it's a good steady night. You said whiting, didn't you? Yeah. Just yeah. whiting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but I, I actually didn't get played by whiting tonight, which is quite unusual, really. Yeah, I've been played surprising. tonight as well. No. I've been played the last few times here. Yeah, I've seen people bringing in whiting, just a head. Yeah, I've yeah. one come in, towel was taken off it. Yeah, yeah, quite, no. Quite close in. Yeah, no, I've, I've had that a few times. That's that's why my next video is what's biting the whiting. Because, yeah, because something and, is, isn't it? And I've had, three, I've had three sessions down here with live bait rods on, coming in with half a whiting at a time and yeah. whatever. No, nothing. But uh, tonight, I did something slightly different. I was using little strips of um, cuttlefish with worm wrapped around them. Yeah. And that's that's what was what was killing it. So, we Which is good. Nah, yeah. no, 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 no. All right, guys. Thanks very much for yeah, help. Nice to meet you anyway. And, and you. See you around. Yeah, give me, give me a COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. COVID joke. Yeah. <laughs> cheers, Kai. Yeah. yeah cheers, it's done, mate. mate.
yeah, a couple of nice guys. Um, obviously keen anglers, um, having a similar sort of night to me, really. Um, yeah, bang on. Seaford Beach, very underrated, very underrated. I think on its night, it fishes really well. And um, my view, my view is from, say, the last hour of the ebb to the top of the tide is, is the time to fish it. We fished it on the ebb the other day, nothing or very little. Um, and it's always been the way. I used to come fishing here 30, 40 years ago, and it was always the way then. Different species of fish 34 years ago, 30 or 40 years ago, strangely enough. Um, there's a good cod run here. Uh, used to get a lot of pouting. Don't remember getting whitey off here. I can remember one night I actually filled the beach with dabs. Um, I've had a nice sole off here. I've had cod to eight pound, bass to seven pound, sole to three pound. Uh, lots of sort of small, smallish codling. Um, but that was 30 or 40 years ago, and it's not like that now. Now it's, it's white in heaven. Um, but as we see, I've had smooth hand off here this year. I've had conger off here. Um, nice ray. So yes, yeah, good spot to fish. Yeah, and, and I'm not one to, to hide my, my, my spots. Um, as long as you give me a bit of space. We're, we're off Seaford Beach. Um, and, and the classic Seaford Beach sites are Edinburgh Road and the Buckle, which are way off and down in that direction. But um, I think here's as good. What you have got to know is that further that way, it gets really snaggy. It gets really snaggy. Beyond the next big old Victorian building, it's Snag City. So, um, and if you go along off the, off the uh, Martello Tower there in a boat and you, with the echo sound, it's a huge reef off there. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Right, let's get these rods put away. Let's go and have something to eat. Let's go and raid the fridge. I think is the answer. Although I can smell something cooking, Chinese cooking. Might have to raid the fish and chip shop because that's the other good thing about fish finishing this early. The fish and chip shop will be open. Hmm. Hmm.